It's the most wonderful time of the week. <laughs> uh, that was <laughs> that was stupid, I'm sorry. Welcome back everybody to our weekly Tower of God discussion video. Today we're here to talk all about episode 8, Kun Strategy. But before we get into the video proper, I do as always want to give a big thank you to those of you who shared last week's video. So a big thank you to Daniel STG, Naya3142, Matt87 Eagle, Darkfire Player 4, and Star Anime. Thank you all so much for sharing last week's video over on Twitter. And if you too would like to have your name shouted out in the next Tower of God video, then be sure to share this video around on the internet, and then tag me at Jojo Talks Much over on Twitter, and I will be sure to shout out the first five of you in next week's video. And with that said, we're gonna get into the video, so I humbly ask that you like comment, subscribe, and nominate Kun for best boy. All right then everybody, we're gonna go ahead and get into it. And the first thing I have to let you guys know about is if you hear a weed whacker going on outside, uh, my neighbors have decided to, uh, just, I guess, do their garden in the middle of me recording this at the exact same time. This has happened uh, a number of days now and I feel like I'm going absolutely insane. But that said, we actually have to talk about the episode, not what's going on outside my window. But that said, <laughs> we're gonna get into it. There are two things that I really want to talk about this week. Uh, of course, they are split up between Team A and Team B, but really it comes down to Quant attempting to say chill and the peanut gallery uh, commenting on what's happening with Team A. And it does lead into some pretty interesting stuff, if I'm totally honest. Quant in particular was a real standout in this week's episode. I was not expecting to like this character as much as I ended up liking him. He's, he's very much like a a, uh, a energetic, uh, very um, sort of outwardly cocky type of character. He's like if Shibisu actually had the skills to pay the bills. You know, Shibisu's our boy. He, he not exactly, like, he, his talk does not quite match the bark. And, and I, I think Quant is what would happen if Shibisu's bite actually matched the bark. So I, I, I gotta say, the fact that um, Quant is also his instructor is very fitting and I have a feeling like they're gonna form a pretty cool connection going forward. They already have like a, a pretty funny connection in this episode, but still I have a feeling watching these two connect as the show goes on might be really fun. Uh, or I don't know, for all I know, Quant could disappear after this arc, I, I have no idea. That said, um, I will say that uh, Quant being like the teacher the whole time, or at least trying to be like, Quant as a character was really fun to watch because he thinks he's he, he thinks he's one thing, but really he's just being played the whole time. Like he feels like he's this like like he's this ranker, right? So he is so much more powerful than everybody here, and that I do not doubt. Like I have one hundred percent faith in the fact that this man is absurdly strong, especially by comparison to all the regulars. Like he must out like he, literally he is a ranker. He has to outrank all of these people. Like he could easily take these dudes out in the blink of an eye. He's even like been limited in the amount of Shinsu he can use. He's limited himself several times. Like he gives them a head start. He says he'll only use the stairs and he, like the fact that his Shinsu is limited, it really shows just how much limitations had to be put on him and he's still wiping the floor with our gang, like very easily no contest, right? So it's it's funny to watch him then get played as the episode goes on. One of my favorite lines is, what does a scout do to avoid becoming a sacrificial pawn? Literally in the middle of this test, he is actually being a teacher. He is telling them like, okay, so you guys are attacking me, I'm the scout. Why do you think scouts are able to keep surviving even though they're the ones on the front lines? How does a scout stay alive? They they fight smart. They fight from the shadows. They they go invisible when they gots to. They, they're fast as and agile as hell. You don't touch a scout. A good scout is not touchable. So that's what Quan I think is attempting to say. Like how how do you avoid becoming a sacrificial pawn? Don't get hit. <laughs> like so it's like, alright, fair enough, fair enough. And I like that um even when uh, Shibisu is like making fun of him, he's like, you can see him getting more and more testy. Like he's getting more and more angry as the episode goes on. Like Quant is not liking how, um, how these kids keep seemingly sort of like 
talking down to him and like how all like I shouldn't say kids because a lot like the age ranges of all these people are like all over the place but how these regulars are talking down to him even though he outranks them like you see it sort of like get to him over time and Shibisu calling him like uh but like I'll get the 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 sh uh, the short redhead by the time he gets up here and he's standing right behind him which is very classic and then Shibisu takes a couple of strong boots to the face uh, basically saying, like, Anak, you better win this over my dead body, ah! Um, and, like, I, Shibisu is just the man. I, I love Shibisu so much. Um, but, yeah, Quant is like, he was gonna pass anyway. Like, is he just doing this out of a love for friendship? Oh my god, their friendship warms my heart. And he keeps chasing after Anak. And little does he know that is exactly what is happening. It, this whole thing... For Team A is nothing but the power of friendship. This is the power of friendship done right. Because it's the power of friendship, but friendship drives what is happening. It's not literally the power of friendship. It's just friendship drives the power. And I really like to see it like that. I like seeing that uh, Kun and everybody are basically allowing themselves to be taken off the board so that they can keep the gang together. I really dig that. And that is like the key moment, right? When it says Kun's strategy, right? That's the ep that's the episode's title. But at the exact same time, it's not really, like it's not a, a strategy about how to take down Quant. It's about how to keep everybody that ha that he has become friends with together. And he even says that like, like thanks Shibisu. And Shibisu's like, oh my God. Like he's like overcome with emotion. He's so proud. He's so happy that Kun is, is, is th A, thanking him, but also B like that Kun is actually coming around and he does want to help his friends. He does want to make sure that everybody passes. He doesn't want, to, he, like he's been doing this since episode like what two since we first met him he's been trying to gather like strong allies to take with him through the tower but that's slow like ally that word ally is slowly turning into friends like it's slowly becoming allies is slowly transforming into friends he wants to take his friends with him through the tower i really like it i really like it a lot but you know who didn't like it quant uh quant is seemingly mighty pissed off with with uh, Team A, he he did not like being played because he did get played. He thought like he thought it, he was calling Kun's bluff, but it really turned out to be a double bluff. But then it turned out to be a triple bluff, and Quant every time was made to look foolish. And this man is totally pissed off about it. You can absolutely t absolutely tell, which makes me very concerned for Team B. I don't think this is going to be a very easy to win situation. I'm very concerned because Quant, like I said, like, yeah, he's a bit of a goofball, but he is a badass. And I'm very concerned that Kun may have actually just hit the hornet's nest a little bit too hard. And now you're going to have a swarm of hornets all over everybody else. That said, it's not like Team B just sat on the sidelines this whole time. They actually did get to do quite a bit of cool stuff this week. Um, cool, not so much in terms of like action, but just in terms of like character beats. We see Endorsey and Bam chatting for a little while, and Endorsey seems like genuinely annoyed that Bam is so showing so much interest in Rachel or Michelle, whatever made up name she's giving. And you could tell like Endorsey really is attempting to like get Bam to be more close to her than than Rachel. There's some feelings there. You can kind of see it. Um, I don't know if Endorsey's like necessarily crushing on Bam. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that Endorsey's like, I'm gonna be like Rachel. I'm I'm better than Rachel. Like you know what I mean? It's it's not coming from a place of like actually catching feelings as much as uh, as much of like, why does she get to have this thing? I want this thing. Like you know what I mean? Like it's just it just it happens that this thing in this case is a person. It's Bam. But I I did like that scene, and I'm like, hmm, I I, mm, I, I like this. I, I like the idea that Bam. Like, Endorsey just wants to be close to Bam because Rachel gets to be close to Bam, but she doesn't even want to be close to Bam. So, Endorsey's like, what the hell? Like, I'll take him if you don't want him. Like, I'll have him. Like, it's like, oh, that's kind of nice. I, I, I like this dynamic. It, it's it's a little weird, but it's sweet, and I like it. And um, the, the other characters uh, who are not technically part of Team B, but they're part of the peanut gallery, so I, I felt like I wanted to mention them, is uh, Rack and the Big Heavy from Team Shady. And Rack is just, sh and, and the big heavy are just shown like chomping down on chocolate. And they're not even remotely, like the big heavy is not even remotely interested in what's going on in the test at all. Whereas Rack, he's interested, but not out of a place of concern. Like Rack is just so incredibly confident 
in Kun and and Bam and his turtles, you know, like he, he's just, he doesn't care. Like he knows that they're good. He doesn't have to worry about them. He knows they're gonna make it through just fine. So he's like, just watch. Like he literally, he literally was straight up Bruno Mars. Just don't believe me, just watch. And he was totally confident. Obviously that confidence did not quite work out the way he thought it would. But again, it also kind of did because this is a way to keep all the turtles together. So I do think that he, I don't think he knew that that Kun was going to purposely sabotage the team and get Lowry to help everybody and, and uh, or get Lowry to help Quant to, to take everybody off the board. But I, I do think that Rack knew whatever Kun was planning, it was going to keep everybody together, going to keep the family together. So I had to mention that uh, Rack's growing confidence in his baby turtles is adorable as hell. I love Rack. I wish he was on screen more, especially now. I feel like Rack in this test would have been so cool. But at the same time, he's such a badass that I'm like, okay, yeah, maybe keep him sidelined. Him and the big heavy would have been awesome to see in the test. But at the same time, them eating chocolate and just being and Rack just being confident in his squad. It's adorable. I like it. And then there's the um, the flip side to the whole friendship allies thing. Thing that I was talking about. That does seem to be the overall running theme. I thought it was just the theme of last week, but the more I think about it, it does seem to be the running theme of this current arc is allies and friendships and what that means in a setting where at any point you may have to turn on those people. And this is no more evident than the scene between Serena, yeah, I remembered her name this week, and Ho. And Ho... Listen, okay, like I said last week, like like that Ho is shady. I, I, I clearly said, like if, like even though Ho was not on Team Shady, like the original Team Shady when they were all trios, Ho is still like the the absolute pinnacle of, of shade. I do not trust this man. I'm sure this man's got reasons because we saw that dream sequence. I, I, I absolutely respect that this man's got his reasons. And honestly, if I'm being real, he is kind of right. Like, I do understand where he's coming from. If and if you need a refresher, Serena and, and Ho have this conversation about, uh, like, friends and, and not even really wanting to climb the tower anymore if it means having to kill your comrades. Like, these people who, like, they're like your brothers and sisters in arms, you know? Like, the idea of having to then turn on them if the situation called for it, it's a situation that Serena doesn't want to be in. And she actually reflects on a time when, when her own friends were killed by a ranker. And then she was taken by head on to the tower just before she died. So it's very interesting. That ranker, whoever they were, they were extremely badass. And they chopped through Serena's friends like cake. It was absolutely brutal. And I, I really wasn't anticipating to see such like an emotional moment. And then that's flipped with Ho. Ho is, is Captain Shade, like I said. Like Ho is... I j there's just something about this man I do not trust. I do not trust this man. I don't like the way he talks. I don't like the way he looks at my boy with the creepy side eye. Like when they were all watching Team A, he kept like glancing over at Bam. Like something's gonna happen with Bam. I don't know what it is, but something's not right. And that whole like, I, I haven't forgotten that friggin' letter that he got. So I'm thinking like, okay, does the letter have something to do with taking Bam out? Who is the letter from? Because at this point, it could be either from one of the rankers, it could be from Kun. It, I don't know. Like I really, I really don't know where it could come from. What I do know is that I am growing horribly concerned that Ho is going to try to sabotage Team B. Uh, and Dorsey also seems to be trying to sabotage Team B. I wasn't really going to mention it because it's just the last scene of the episode. Is just in Dorsey kicks some rando dude to the ground. I don't know what's going on with that, so I'm not even going to comment. But I. I'm concerned about Ho. Ho has me very worried. I don't want him to, to, to fight my boy. Because if he does, listen, Ho, I like you. I like you a lot. You're interesting. You're a very interesting character. But if you lay a hand on my boy, I will break that other horn off. <laughs> I swear to God. With that said, I'm going to wrap up my thoughts here. Uh, question of the day today. What are your thoughts on Ho? Are, are you as, as as intrigued by this character as I am? I don't know if I like him or dislike him, but I know that I'm always engaged whenever he's on screen. So yeah, question of the day. What are your thoughts on Ho? Let me know in the comments.
And with that said, we've reached the end of the video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then don't forget to boop the up snoot and share if you care. And if you want to see me rambling even more, then feel free to follow me on Twitter or join our good folks Discord, both of which are linked in the doobly-doo. Lastly, if you're feeling generous, consider checking out our Patreon page to help support this channel. Speaking of which, I'd like to give a big thank you to our lovely patrons, such as... Izevi, Alex, Andrew W, Branson C, Calvin A, Crowbar of Irony, Daniel G, Deep Not That Deep, Digger the Fox, Dominic G, Emily, Ionos, Urza, Ginkotaku, Godzilla Fan, No For Nothing, Maria T, Marshall B, Mater, Mirth Mouser, Nymad, Cell, Shadow Creative, Steven G, The Suavest Orange, Tristan G, and Veridan. Thank you all so much for your continued support over on Patreon, and once again, thank you for checking out today's video. Hope you guys have a lovely day, and until next time, you stay classy, AnyTube, and wash your dang hands.